Captain Matt, Boat Buyer's Secret Weapon, and today we're talking boating rules. I'm going to try to give you, in 11 minutes or less, I'm going to try to give you the boating rules that everybody needs to know. It can take uh, two full days to get this in some of the boater safety classes. I'm going to give it to you in less than 11 minutes, so let's do it. Who has the right of way? Stand on giveaway vessels. Tips to avoid 97% of all tight calls. Your wake common navigation aids, VHF radio, a hidden danger every boater needs to know about and the number one rule of boating safety. So let's look at who has the right of way. Well, there's really no right of way exactly in boating. It doesn't work the same way as it does cars. There's a giveaway vessel, which is the vessel that must make a significant course change uh, and a stand-on vessel which should maintain course and speed. So let's take a look at pecking order of vessels, who has the giveaway status and who has the stand-on status. If you're an overtaken vessel, so the vessel being passed, they are the number one, they have got stand-on status. Uh, vessel not under command, which means a, a doubt for whatever reason, it's not able to be controlled, constrained by draft, large barges, heavy boats that just don't have a maneuverability. Fishing vessels with gear deployed. Now, this is commercial fishing vessels with their nets and gear out, not just Johnny on his um, on his bass boat. Sailboat when they're under sail and human powered vessels, stand up paddle boards, kayaks, that type of thing. And then power driven vessels. That's all of us pleasure boaters, including personal watercraft. We give way to everybody. We're the give way vessel um, to every other vessel. Uh, in the uh, pecking order. So here, let's look at an example. Meeting head on. When you're meeting another boat head on, you're both give way vessels. You both need to make a significant course change to avoid collision. And you both go to starboard. You pass port to port. You go to starboard and you pass safely. But you can see it's a significant change uh, in, in course. And then you pass. Okay. If you are Going faster than somebody that you're following, first of all, I recommend don't follow somebody too close. Don't get right between their wakes and uh, get right up on them. That's not a good situation, uh, but you're the giveaway vessel if you're traveling faster, and what you need to do is, again, make a significant change well behind them, not right behind them, uh, and you can pass them port or starboard. I am going to recommend that you pass to the starboard if it's safe, if it's possible, uh, because that's going to give you a clear path. And if you do meet another boat, well, you're going to go starboard again and you're not cutting in front. If you go port and another boat's coming head on, well, you're going to have to cut back starboard and you have to cut right in front of the boat you just passed. You don't want to do that. You want to get well ahead of them before you get back into their line. Um, and your wake uh, disturbs them. This is what I think is the most confusing for people is when there's a crossing situation, when you're going and it appears that you're going the right speed, the right direction where you're going to cross each other's paths and have a collision or near collision. The way I like to look at it is if you know one, then you can figure out all the rest. If you give way to boats off your starboard are your right bow. So that red line there, if you give way to anybody that's approaching you in this arc right there, you're going to be the give way vessel and you're going to make a maneuver to avoid them. And it's going to look like this. You're going to make a significant maneuver starboard and you're going to pass them on their stern. So they continue going forward at their, their course and their speed and you pass them safely. So let's take a look at this example. You're the yellow boat and you are meeting the blue boat. Looks like you're going about the same speed that's going to make you cross and have a potential collision. What should you do? Are you the stand on? Are you the give way? And what should you do? Well, you are in that case, the stand on vessel and you need to continue forward. The blue vessel is the give way. They need to make a significant move to starboard to let you know, hey, I see you. I'm going this way and pass you safely with the caveat. Beware. Some other boaters may just do something unexpected. So pay attention. It's your responsibility to avoid a collision, um, even if they do the unexpected, the unthinkable, the wrong thing. Okay. So here's my recommendation to you. This is what I teach in my best boat captain on the water training. We'll keep a 360 degree mental map of everybody that you can see on the water. 
their direction, their speed, and their intention. What I mean by intention is what are they doing and what are they likely to do? So if they're doing water sports, what are they likely to do? If they're tubing, you know they're probably going to do some circles and drive erratically. If it's a 19-year-old kid in a wake boat or a speed boat, well, you know that they might go a little faster. If they're a retired couple in an old pontoon, they're probably going to go slow. So keep that in your head as you're cruising and know where the boaters are, what they're doing, what direction and kind of what to expect from them. And that's going to keep you safe in a lot of situations. So the seven tips to sum up 80% of the rules of the road. Number one, always maintain a proper lookout or pay attention. The U.S. Coast Guard releases uh, accident numbers and fatalities. And like the top three, four or five, I've done a video on it, are because the boat operator is not keeping a good lookout or not paying attention. So if you do that, number one, you're going to be in great shape. Uh, stay well clear of other vessels. I say 200 feet, no matter what the law is, there's a lot of water out there. Use it and there's no reason to go close by another boat. Um, keep safe speed for the conditions, congestion, visibility, weather, make early and significant course changes. So the other vessel knows what you're doing. You're basically saying, Hey buddy, I see you. I'm going to do this and you do that. It's kind of letting your intentions be known. You're responsible for your wake at all times, whether you're in a, a surf boat, making a huge wake with your ballast, or you're just a boat going too slow or too fast, but not fast enough. And you're plowing the water, come back on that throttle to get all the way to no wake. And, uh, because you're responsible for your wake at all times, don't anchor or fish in a narrow channel or near a bridge. It's a dangerous area. It's inconsiderate. Um, and it's against the regulations. Be aware and be respectful to others. If we all do this, if we're all aware and we're all respectful, everybody's going to have a better time. Now, this is something I created a video on carbon monoxide and boating, what you need to know. It's the hidden danger of boating. Any motor that runs gasoline creates carbon monoxide. It's a deadly gas. Um, and if you're in a boat, typically a stern drive aren't inboard, uh, and you're going with a tailwind, it can blow that carbon monoxide back in the boat. Uh, if you're going, you know, five, seven miles an hour, wake surfing, that kind of speed, it can blow those back in the boat and it can cause major, major problems. Go watch that video. I don't want to go into a lot of detail, but check out that video so you're aware of it. VHF radios. If you need to use it, you need to know how. So, Number nine, channel nine is the primary calling channel. That's where you say, hey, buddy, I want to talk to you. Um, go to channel, whatever the pleasure boating communication channel. If you're getting to a bridge, channel 13, the Coast Guard's got 22A. And channel 16 is the emergency only channel. That's not the channel you tell your buddy where the fishing spot is or that you're going to your favorite cove. Um, you call them on nine and say, you know, 27 uh, C Ray calling uh, 16 Larson. Go to channel 68. You go to channel 68 and then you say, hey, we're going to Papa Docs to, to grab uh, some lunch. We're going, we're going to head out. Uh, we're going to this fishing spot. It's hot. That's where you have those conversations. Always listen for a little bit before you start talking so you don't talk over somebody. Remember, everybody are on the same channels and us pleasure boaters have our own 68, 69, 71, 72, 78. Um, and be brief because everybody can hear everything that you say. It's just more polite. Channel 16 is for emergencies. Remember, if you do need to call a mayday, things are going down. Put on your life jackets first, dial up, call 16, and make this type of call. Mayday, mayday, mayday. This is 28 Sea Ray. Uh, latitude and longitude, if you know it, are some sort of location description. Uh, describe the emergency. We are taking on water and we're going down. Describe the crew and passengers. We have six people on board, three kids three adults. Uh, describe any injuries. We have a broken arm or we have somebody that is, is having a seizure. Um, describe the boat color so they can find you. We are a red hole with white gunnels, uh, size 28 with a whatever defining markers you have on the boat, and then give, give a brief assessment of the situation. Stay calm. Speak clearly. I know it's an emergency, but that will help you get better results and then repeat that about every two or so minutes until your call is answered. So now you know that. 
buoy markers. If you see something white with orange, it means there's a danger. If there's a circle, it means reduce your speed or go all the way down to no wake speed, idle speed. If it's a diamond, it means there's something in the water that you don't want to hit. Um, so be aware, uh, know your signs. If it's a navigational aid, red and green markers are going to mark the channel. They're marking the deep water where you can go without running your boat aground. Reds, you keep them on the right when you're going from large water back to small water. So you're going from the ocean to the intercoastal, the intercoastal uh, to a river, from the river to the creek, or you're going upstream on a river. That's going to keep the reds on the right. You keep the greens on the right when you're going from small water to big water. So you're heading out to the ocean. You keep the greens on the right at that time, or you're going downstream uh, if you're on a, a freshwater river inland. Okay. Now, the next thing, you've got to maintain control of your boat. You've got to be able to operate your boat properly in all situations, because this is the big one. All boaters must act in a reasonable and prudent manner at all times to avoid collision and to keep their passengers safe. Well, you can't do that if you don't know how to operate your boat around the docks, to put it on the trailer, to pull water sports, uh, to do the navigational things that you need to do that we just talked about. Now, the safe boating programs are awesome. I wish everybody would take a safe boating program, but what they don't cover is how to actually drive your boat, how to dock your boat, how to maneuver your boat. It's why I put together the best boat captain on the water training. Press that like button. If you enjoyed this video and this type of content, subscribe to the channel. We're always doing new videos. And remember, life truly is better on a boat.